welcome and, and thanks for inviting me to the panel. And yes, um, what I've heard, heard so far and what I know about the other colleagues, I guess one of the reasons why I was invited it was to have a bit of a different view on the issue <laughs> in order for us to have a good debate as well. <laughs> but that's okay, I'm used to that, I don't mind. Let me, let me say first of all that, uh, um, as, as you said, Mr. Asia, I will not be speaking here mostly as the Vice President of the European Parliament because there I would need to represent the whole Parliament, which I cannot on the TV issue, and which I think isn't the issue for here either. So I will be speaking as a Green uh, member of the European Parliament, um, but also telling you a bit about what also has been happening on the topic in the European Parliament. And, um, uh, and let me tell you, in general, the debates in the European Parliament um, over the last year, well, since in the new period, since last uh, July, mostly have focused on, I would say, the, the, the three topics that have been of relevance also in the mainstream here, in uh, not just in Austria, but in the European Union. That is the transparency of the process, um, that is ISDS, Investor State uh, Dispute Settlement, and the, um, the, the question whether acquired social and ecological standards that we have fought for on this continent, and also there are some in the US, like on uh, banking transparency, that are better than we have them here, whether these standards would be enhanced, or whether, as many of us fear, would go down for everyone. So that was the main topics in the European Parliament, but nevertheless, uh, we've had, especially with the development committee, but also in the other committees involved, I think it was about nine committees that were involved in, in preparing also the position of the European Parliament. Uh, of course, the issue of what effect it has on, on third countries, or it might have speculating as everybody is doing, um, that also was a topic. And uh, now, um, and yes, you're right, I, I would not agree with quite a few of the things I've heard until now. Let me maybe tell you, I, I come, as you said, I come from a development background. I worked with development NGOs, development campaigning for a long time before uh, I decided to join a political party in the parliament. So that's my background, and with that, I've seen for many years uh, development of free trade agreements that, uh, from where I come from, also from a civil society background, <coughs> from a civil society background, that there is more criticism than belief in that free trade agreements really are, 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 are changing situations, economic situations, social situ situation, uh, in uh, especially the poorer development countries, but also in the richer ones to the better for a big majority of people. I, I do see that uh, in some free trade agreements, yes, certain part of the population has been able to get out of poverty and certain middle classes have been developed, that's true, yeah, in, in many countries, also in the poorer ones. Nevertheless, I mean, we're here in Altbach with the great topic and the, the topic of inequality. I mean, we've, we've hardly seen any country in the world, but also we see that here in Europe, that inequalities in many places are rising, yeah, and they are not being lowered, despite millions of people having come out of poverty. And so for me, um, <laughs> as much as I love freedom, yeah, and, and freedom of people and of individuals, and also uh, I do think that freedom, certain freedoms for the economy and for um, companies also have to be there. But I'd always rather prefer to try to talk about things like fair trade, really making it more just and equal for people everywhere than just the free trade. Yeah. So that's, I think, one basic start which uh, I would like to, to say at the beginning. And I'm saying that also uh, in, in comparison to just the recent uh, free trade agreements and association agreements, we had uh, voted in the European Parliament in 2012, I think it was, with Peru and Colombia and with Central America. Um, and I have to say as well, the European Parliament the, the, the reason why we're involved now is because of the Lisbon Treaty. Because before the Lisbon Treaty in 2009, the European Parliament didn't have any say in it. By now, at the end of the negotiations, which we're not part of, we have to say yes or no to those treaties. Yeah? So that's at least some leverage that we have, um, and um, that we also will have on TTIP. 
um, saying that also having in mind that some national parliaments of the European Union also will, according to their constitutional uh, setups, uh, will have to have a, a vote in the national parliaments as well. Now, coming to what we've done in the European Parliament, there has been a, uh, the European Parliament's uh, secretariat of the of the. Um, of the, uh, the, the Director General for External Policies, has looked at what kind of studies have already existed or are existing on looking into effect on, on, on third countries, on developing countries. They looked mostly at one of the studies of Bertelsmann, at one of Carnegie and one of Caris, and there, um, what I got from those studies, and um, referring to uh, Mr. Ambassador, who uh, I, also, I was a bit... Uh, I thought you also would have some critical comments on it, because in the studies that I have read and seen, there is, these studies also say that TTIP could also have a strong negative impact on both Canada and Mexico. First of all, also starting with the fact that neither Canada or Mexico, and you said that, are not even observers in the negotiations. And you, you are hoping it will have a good effect, and you're hoping it will when it's done, include also, uh, or have positive effects on Canada or Mexico. But I, I, I have to say, and we know each other from other debates, <laughs> other debates. <laughs> uh, I would have thought that there would also have been some of that criticism that neither Mexico or Canada are somehow involved in the debates, because you have to then, will have to follow what, uh, if at all, the US and the EU will agree upon. Yeah? I find that also from a democratic point of view or from a government's point of view, which I've never been part of, but nevertheless, I would think that I would <laughs> protest and say I want to be part there. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing uh, on the effect, um, what I read in these studies also about the, uh, with, with, uh, that, that TTIP might make NAFTA redundant by shrinking the exports to the US by over 16%. I mean, that's what studies say, as we, we're all speculating, I guess. Um, and uh, so um, I think there are certain issues that I think also will can have uh, a detrimental effect on on the um, uh, on some on some countries. I also, when uh, Mr. Shul, when you were presenting your study, I was looking at the figures and the and the and the. Um, uh, the, the, the figures I have from your study that the European Parliament used, and there, I mean, I don't have it in color, but the two I have was one which says the change um, in real per capita income, if TTIP were only to eliminate tariffs, there are only like three or four countries that would really go ahead well, but then when it says um, if the TTIP were to achieve deep liberalization, which I understood you had that, the green-green card, the card I have here from, from your study only has a couple of countries which really would improve. So maybe my question to you already before we start the debate among us would be which study is which of yours and which is really true? Because from these studies, hardly any of the developing countries would improve. Yeah? They would rather all have their per capita income go down. And then again, if we look at per capita income, it doesn't say who has, who has how much of that income in the countries. So that's a totally different debate, but since inequality is the topic of uh, the Alp Forum Alpa here, I think that is also something to take into account, that per capita income, yes, it is one of the issues that we use in statistics, but it's not something that really shows how, how, which kind of inequalities you have in a country. And most of developing countries have a high level of inequalities high level of very rich people, yeah? and high level of very poor people, and yeah, some in the middle. So it doesn't say anything about that. So I don't want to be too long for this start, but as you can see from uh, my positions here, I'd like to, to end with um, um, uh, three also very specific things. One is, if TTIP will have, will the EU, EU and US will have this most favored nation status to each other, it all, or preferential treatment, it also might mean if the EU would want to have with some African country some preferential tariffs, etc., and we'd also have to do the same with the US. Yeah? That might not make sense in all, in all cases. The second is this regulation council. It is supposed to be set up with public officials, public uh, servants, and uh, representatives of certain interest groups which, just as such, is not a democratic thing. 
And it's not also including people from like consumer protection areas, yeah? Where, and if this council is gonna set standards for EU and US, third countries also, and the, everyone has been saying that, will try to follow these standards. I mean, my belief or my trust that these standards are going to be high ecologically and socially is not very big from what we've seen over decades. Um, and the last one is also, um, no, I'll finish with that. I'll leave it for now. <laughs> I can get to that later, we still have some time. So that's two things as well where I think this treaty as it is negotiated at the moment, what we know about it, uh, is not something that I support because I do not think it helps deliver higher standards and it would also help um, uh, third countries, be it Mexico or even poorer countries, to really go ahead on a socially and ecologically and well, socially and economically more just society. Thank you.